Do you want early access? Do you want uncut reactions? If so, then check out our Patreon. Link in the description down below. In spite of Funimation doing its best to sh** the bed, uh, we are now at the finale of Season 5 of My Hero Academia. And I could not be happier, because, <clears throat> just gonna be honest, this is something that I've been looking forward to, being fully caught up on My Hero Academia, in terms of the anime, of course. I know the manga, like, you know, it's like, I can see the cheeky comment now, it's like, Finally glad to be caught up to My Hero Academia. <laughs> Laughs in manga. <laughs> if so, you laugh in manga, you have a punchable face. I'm just going to let you know that. Laughs in animation and music. Laughs in animation, fully colored with uh, music and awesome voice acting. I'm going to do an anime. Whoa! <laughs> I'm going to do a manga. Oh. <laughs> there you go. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. See, that was the thing that irked me about Attack on Titan because, like, I was reading the manga a little bit after I'd seen the anime, and I was just like, it's exactly the same, but there's more gore in the manga. But at the same time, there's none of the cool, flashy movements and animation and kick ass, fucking hair raising, like, speeches and shit that, like, give you chills to hear and stuff like that. Yeah, it was just, it's not the same. It's not that it's bad, it's just not the same. And I can see it now. And I'm like, if they would have put the gore in the the animation, like, version of Attack on Titan, like, it would be even better than it already is. I, I can also see, like, people in the comment sections yelling at each other. I, I can already see that. That's the comment section every time I say something they don't agree with, dude. Eh, who gives a shit? Oh! So, uh, we got the episode queued up here. This is called The High Deep Blue Sky. So, let's go! What happened in Dega? It was you guys, right? <laughs> I'm not sold that this is actually him. But you did kill somebody. How heroic. Call There's it. no way he actually you killed him. has needed with his control over communication networks. Dednarat is a big player in the hero industry. And there are likely other high-end gnomes around waiting to be unleashed. Shigaraki has gathered so much power that it might be impossible to stop him. Was that... Wait, what? Go back. Look at the belt on that chick. Yeah. It looks really similar to Raven. Kind of. Azareth, Metreon, Zinthos. Well, wondering Zinthos. if she's supposed to be a Raven, like, uh, Easter egg. Maybe. Come on, Hawks. You're too slow. It'll be the end of Japan. Now you can obliterate not only something you touch, but also whatever is connected to it. You have become the embodiment of destruction. Why do you still seek more power? If more strength is available, why wouldn't I take it? This is from using my ability once. And there's a whole war coming. I won't underestimate heroes anymore. I was originally conducting this research for all for one, but you'll benefit from it quite nicely. Though our minds are adaptable and expansive, our hardware can't evolve fast enough to keep up with such power. Signs of this began showing up as early as the fourth quirk generation. All for one recognized that the problem with capacity was a serious one which hmm. needed to be remedied. <laughs> For the next four months, your life will be one of hellish agony. The world will be in the palm of your hand. Even Jesus. one for all. One for all. Naval laser. Naval saber! I want a sword. That's pretty cool. Hey, working together. Oh, oh that's cool. Ashido. Wonderful job. Your work study's paid off. I got the idea from your unbreakable. <laughs> Aw. Nice. Aw. We have obviously improved. We're using a flurry of attacks and predicting enemy moves. Our search skills improved. Janetta. Hey, 
up some quick and efficient teamwork. Recipro extends! A looser approach. Clearer communication. Coda. Work study with laundry hero Wash. Number eight on the chart. <laughs> Number eight, <laughs> damn. Black Abyss, seven! Red Riot. Opponent lose the will to fight super quick. Teamwork and decisiveness. The calculation and efficiency. Work study with magic hero Majestic. Oh, that's cool. Pushing myself to the max. Bakugo. Increasing my speed. Todoroki. You don't look back at me for approval anymore, do you? You don't need to. Keep going, young man. <laughs> robots are just like... <laughs> the robots are just like, God dang it, how many of our kind do we have to keep cleaning up? <laughs> it's a massacre every time. Hey, Bakugo. It's like, ah, they'll put them back together. Huh? It's like, ah, they'll put them back together. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> oh, well. Hey. Beats being... At least it's not us out there getting fucked up every day. That is true. <laughs> that is very, very true. <laughs> I was able to gain control of Black Whip. You helped me so much. Thank you. <laughs> oh, please. That's ancient history, Kay. Seeing you inspired me to have these wires put in my costume. And I think both of us are better because of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? I could go for something easy to digest. Udon? I've been thinking. <laughs> given the work studies. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> I do too. I've done the exact thing before. <laughs> yes, me too. I actually did that right when I got home from like the trip with Chad. I was just like, huh. just like flat well sometimes it's like there's nowhere to fucking lay down and you're just like i really need to lay down for at least a second and then you're just like uh, <laughs> and then next thing you know you wake up an hour later just like and then you start <laughs> to overthink it and it's like dang it lots of people put their butts here and i just put my face there <laughs> it's like shit if we find out who's manufacturing no mill then what i'll have a surprise karaoke contest with them then boil their guts while their eardrums bleed. <laughs> Damn. You erase your head. It's about Harry. Oh no. Oh, thank goodness. It's my horn. Why is it itch? Don't worry. You're in excellent hands at UA. Congrats on Black Poor girl. Thank you very much. And excellent work from you too, young Bakugo. The next step is yours. Unfortunately, I couldn't find so much as a whisper about the second or third users. The fifth user was called Lariat. Guess that makes sense. Real name, Diger oh, Obanjo. So started with Quirk, the fifth. Black Whip. He excelled at capture and mid-air maneuvers. One thing is obvious. None of these people started with quirks that were even worth mentioning. From what we know, All for One was obsessed with this quirk. As they died, Struggling in terrible pain. The past users entrusted this power to the future, adding to its legacy. What quirk are you gonna make the damn nerd learn to use next? The next power you should manifest is float. My master's ability. I win! <laughs> I use my explosions to fly! You're gonna waste time learning something I've basically been able to do forever! While you're crashing and burning, I'll hone my skills even more at the work study! Choke on my smoke! <laughs> I'll probably panic, go out of control, and die! <laughs> God, Jesus, Bakugo! What fool cut the chives? I did. You've saved your sister! Damn it! I think that'd be kind of hilarious if no, Bakugo right. ends up with a crush on his sister because she can cook. Well, I mean, why not? It's I mean, like, you shamed your sister. <laughs> you bring shame to your family. Hey. It's like, that's the first thing. I, like, the first 
sort of compliment, like it's an indirect compliment, but he's like complimenting someone. Yeah. Something wrong? I decided to keep on living. I feel so powerless. Like nothing I try really matters. I'm tortured by the fact that I can't do more to prepare them for the future. You defended us almost on your own for decades. So yeah, I'm sure it's hard to come down from that high. That's a little harsh. Your presence is enough to inspire greatness. That's the truth. Don't apologize for being alive. Thanks. I hope your research is proving fruitful. Yes! All that's left is to wait for the finishing touches. Jesus. Looks hell of painful. Be sure of Four months, attack. dude. Mm -hmm. Hope next day will be here soon. It says we have an expeditionary operation. So like a work field trip? Now hold on, for real? That's weird. Same for us. Our agency too. I wonder why. There are heroes at the foot of the mountain. But we'll be evacuating residents from our position in the back. The League of Villains. No. The Paranormal Liberation Front was plotting. And the harrowing incident that would shake superhuman society was about to begin. It's here. Oh, damn. It's here. Mm hmm Well, not yet. We gotta wait for season six. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, just... Damn, dude. Damn! I am... <laughs> it again like it's always a little disappointing to me that they have like such a like build up at the end of seasons and then there's just kind of a well me like you know for the last episode well cliffhangers like cliffhanger endings are always something that piss some people off you want to know where that all started I was pissed you off before. I've heard oh, this, yes. So. Like, uh, <laughs> oh, Arcane. Arcane. I actually heard you in your room yelling about that. And I had, God! I actually had to, like, listen to Nate's door for a minute to make sure, like, something <clears throat> horrible hadn't happened to the channel or something, because that's what it sounded like when he yelled. Yeah, I was very, very upset with Arcane, with how it the first season ended. I'm just like, you you got to be kidding me. You've got to you gotta be kidding me! <laughs> Y'all will eventually see that. It'll be a little bit, but y'all will see how I reacted to the end of Arcane Season 1. Quinn That's basically why, had until the same I started reaction. doing this job, I gotta feed my kitty in just a minute. Yep. Oh, crap. Oh, I forgot he's down here. I gotta feed him now, because he's not gonna show yeah, up Yeah, so... So I'll be right back. Yeah, I'll I'll keep them entertained for right now. ha da da di da Ha da dee da da da, ha da 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 dee da da da, da 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 da, ha da 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 dee da da, da da dee da da, ha da 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 dee da da, da 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 da. So yeah, um, this whole thing with cliffhangers. I mean, I'll, I'll tell Nick. I'll tell Nick whenever he gets back. Um, here's what I'll say about my hero. Every time they do one, it always builds. It builds on top of what came before. <clears throat> of what came before. And it just incrementally improves. That's it. Just improve and improve and improve and improve. And we're at the point now where I think basically we're nearing like the precipice of like the main story arc. Like, for instance, this whole thing with the paranormal, uh, you know, the, you know, the paranormal liberation army, this, this whole thing, it's a lot like the Shihei Asaikai back in, uh, season four, that whole scene was just ridiculous. And then they, of course, they ended that season with Endeavor's last stand against the Nomu when he basically burned it into into a crisp and then of course there's also uh there's also season five Th i'm not gonna say this was a lull of a season but this was definitely one that surprised me with like the directions that they went in a good way in a great way i loved it all right I'm back. Sorry. sorry 
<clears throat> but in terms of cliffhangers, you uh, you know where that really got popularized? Uh, I can't remember. It I was think you sh- told me before. It was a show called Dallas. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. I remember now. Fucking Who Shot JR? And they went off the air with that season. And then basically everyone had to wait. I think it was like five, six months for Dallas to restart. And it was the most watched television episode at that point in history. That's un- unbelievable to me. And what we have here with My Hero is like we're having a constant build towards what's next. And I love that. I love the fact that, well... well it's based, it, I think that it's just the format of it. Like, it, we had the Hero Academia for, like, the first half of the season, or the first two-thirds of the season. And then we had basically all of the development for the villains to actually get them to a place where they were actually going to be semi-respectable villains. Yeah. And then we ended off with just the hero still kind of just, you know, everything's all hunky-dory, like nothing bad's happening here, like some class stuff, hanging out with friends, like a little bit of like showing off what we've done with our powers, but nothing really big for the last episode. Yeah. And it's just, I think I'm spoiled by the way other series tend to at least have some sort of like big like event for their season finale all the time you know well and uh, just the season finale of my hero every time is like they're not treating it that way well and so I, that's fine it's just i think i just feel spoiled like i said like on other series that don't treat their finales that way know what i mean no i get you i get you 100 percent. and to feel that way is perfectly logical i mean you're used to something for so long and then all of a sudden, this show comes along. And it's like, oh hey, here's like thirteen to twenty six episodes of something amazing. Well, uh, it's basically like other shows tend to end arcs at the end of seasons. Either that, or they end the season halfway through an arc on a major cliffhanger. But this show ends its arc slightly before the end of the season. Does that make sense? Well, no, and it it ends the arc, but then it teases the next arc with the Kinda, last yeah. episode. I know. It's almost a little fillery on the season finale on each one. Well, of them. in truth, I think the finale is to wrap up because here's the thing: what are they going to do? Just like end it at the end of that arc? Just like oh, that's the end. It's like wait, what? Where's the in between? Where's and you know you could start the next season like that, but at the same time. I think having that resolution episode where we see the fruits of their labor and we see what is on the horizon, I think fits this format very well. I don't think, and this is, again, this is just how anime is nowadays, especially ones of high quality like this versus Dragon Ball Z, which, don't get me wrong, are quality in their own right but they recycle a lot of the same animations well, Dragon and Ball Z doesn't really come off as like one that actually even went in seasons to me like I, I don't even know where the seasons split apart all I know is the arcs that split you know well but that's the uh, well, when, when I watched Dragon Ball Z back in the day it wasn't coming out one season at a time like it was a brand new thing it was ported in its entirety over to Toonami, pretty much. And not in my experience. Like, no. it would just air week to week, episode, 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 episode. It wasn't like they just stopped for months, and then you had to wait for the next part. Except they actually did. I don't remember them doing that when I watched I, it. Dude, coming up, here. here's what I'll tell you. When I watched the first, like, first, like, bit of Dragon Ball Z when I was a kid, there was something that happened. It was right after Goku arrived on Planet Namek. There was one episode, it was right when he finally arrived and he started engaging the Ginyu Force. And basically, it was, it, the show ended off with, has Goku really become a Super Saiyan? And then the show restarted. All the way back to the beginning with Raditz. It did that for, like, I think two full runs before eventually it caught on and... Cartoon I Network guess. was just like, okay, we need to pay for the rest of the dub on this, but instead of going through Ocean, we're going to go with Funimation. And that's actually where Funimation kind of got their big start. 
I guess that's where I, where I started watching it at. But, so but then, of had, course, they had there restarted also, the full run finally. They did, but uh, they kept playing the Ocean dub for the first, like, I think 130 episodes. And then after that was when we got the Funimation dub, which everyone talked about that at school. They were just like, dude, Krillin and, like, Krillin and Gohan and Vegeta all sound so different. It's like what like what is what is this? And eventually people just got used to it. And then the Funimation dub basically became the norm. But then when we got to after the Frieza saga was over, we had a little bit of a buffer and a little bit of a breather before the Cell Saga. And then or the androids and the Cell Saga. And then after the Cell Saga was done, we did another run through, and then the Boo Saga came out. And then after that, it was like a complete run through, no breaks. I think I remember, like, I think I caught whenever they were going into the Cell Saga for the first time is when I started watching it. Because I remember it went all the way through and then they maybe had like a little bit of time where there were commercials and they were like leading up to like going into the Cell Saga. And that came out and I watched it like almost all of it. And then like the next thing I know... Like, I missed the end of the Cell Saga, and I didn't care for a little while, and then they were doing the Boo Saga, and I was like, well, I guess I just missed the Boo Saga altogether, like, or, you know, this, the end of the Cell Saga, and I'll just got to watch the Boo Saga now. Missed the end of it, too. So, yeah. I don't this know. is this is where I was. Like, for me, when this start, this was when Toonami was at its peak, right here. This intro got me, like, super fucking hyped. I was just like... I will make this whole planet suffer! This can't be happening! I am the Prince of All Saiyans once again! <laughs> I vaguely remember that one. God, dude, so fucking good. I remember when they started doing the intros like that and getting the hype. Like, that's the thing. Toonami, whenever they were running at their peak, were really good about getting people hyped because they would release music videos that would have footage from the various anime. It was basically like the first AMVs, mm. and then people started trying to do them on YouTube later on. And I'm so glad that these have survived and people have either remade them or uploaded versions that they recorded on their uh, on their VHS tapes. God, so like again, I just remember that. I also you know remember. It would be kind of fun, actually. What is to go make our own tsunami intros for shows we watch nowadays that aren't on tsunami now because it's not really a thing anymore. Well, yeah, we can do that. That'd be kind of fun just to do for the hell of it. Oh and yeah, just find some of the coolest scenes from like I, I don't My know, Hero, My or... Hero, Attack on Titan. Like, I think Attack on Titan is actually on like Adult Swim, Tsunami, or something. I like, think I it remember, is. Yeah. But, um. Yeah. Just the the modern. But do the shows old school really intros, cool. dude. I would love. To yeah, do, like, yeah. Old like in the style. That's what I'm saying. In the style of the old school intros, like that one right there. Like, but take our own clips from like modern shows and do them that way. Uh. Yeah, Gundam Wing, the Gundam Wing intro. This one was also really, really good. It's a Gundam! What the heck? That's the mobile suit! It's a Gundam! Surrounded and destroyed! Destroyed by areas like there was nothing! What? Enemy attack! Enemy attack! Let's go, go, go! Just get me! Sucks how bad the audio quality on it is, though. Still, though. Accepted. Yeah, that one that one still yeah. sticks out in my mind very heavily. Uh, this one was this one the oh yeah that one's uh later on. Gosh, dude, uh, do the tsunami uh, outlaw star intro. Oh yes, I know that one. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like that's most mostly what I remember about that show is from this. Yeah. Tom two. Let's go. You know, I never noticed that too right there. What? 
back up to where Aisha. I was. saw it. Yeah, yeah I like saw her it. tits came out on. Well, this that is intro. a this is a remake. Someone remade this. Oh, okay. On That's the original why. one, I don't know if they censored it or not. They had to have because they wouldn't have showed that. Yeah. But there's also all In those fact, music. Like I, you, we should probably I make sure. I guess I'd make sure I edit that part out whenever. If you want to, <laughs> just in case. If you want to, because I mean that's the part that they censored off. Like that's what her tits looked like when she was like fully naked in the one hot. Oh, for episode. God's sakes! It's like there's they didn't draw nipples on them, but like you know. Yeah. It, like there's still like the protrusion of the nipple, but there's no areola. <laughs> I remember there was a. Mad Rhetoric, uh, yeah, the Mad Rhetoric one, that one was really good. Advanced Robotics, Broken Promises. Uh, was it the... Reboot on Toonami? Uh, yes, it was early yeah. on. Yeah, I remember it having a good intro as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was the, the uh, this will show you how old it is, the Moltar one. Yeah, I didn't ever see that one. Dude. Molta, the host before Tom was Moltar yeah, from that, Space Ghost. I was not watching Tsunami at that point. Yeah. Have you ever worked with anything high tech? Yeah. Time to shut you down. You won't get away with this. We'll fight you to the last. Interesting. Yeah, and again, just the fact that that's where Toonami started. Toonami started as just like a a basic, you know, version of uh, just like random uh, animation blocks. Oh. They would play stuff like Reboot. Uh, they would play reruns of like Space Ghosts and shit like that. But then as the programming block changed and they were just like, instead of Moltar, let's go with another host. And that's when they came up with Tom. And that's Tom, the Absolution, you know, just so many, like, oh, God. So many memories, dude. I remembered when uh, when Toonami originally went off the air in 2007. Yeah. It that, made coming home from middle school and high school pretty fun throughout the years. So. Oh, yeah, dude. Or at and, least into, I think it was in the high school for me. Like, it, somewhere about freshman year or sophomore year of high school... I unplugged my cable from my TV and never watched TV again. Never watched cable again. Yeah. Like, and it, it was just like, I, I kind of, at that point, like I got my own job at GameStop and I started getting a hold of like more video games than I wanted. Mm -hmm. And so it was just like, why would I spend my time watching commercials and shit that I may or may not even want to watch on TV when I could just work on playing video games. And so... Video well, gaming became, like, my number one hobby at that point, and I didn't really watch anything I, anymore, and I didn't really start watching stuff regularly again until streaming services like Netflix started to come to I remember. Home, like I remember when this, when this happened. This was just after I left high school. My friend called me. My friend Andrew called me and told me that this was happening, and I watched the final sign-off. Yeah, I, didn't, I did not see that. Well, this is the end, beautiful friends. After more than 11 years, this is Toonami's final broadcast. It's been a lot of fun, and we'd like to thank each other. Is that what Tom looked like at the end? Yeah. What the fuck? Tom wouldn't have been anything without you. Tried to make it more kid-friendly. He looked awful. We've left you with some good memories. So, until we meet again, stay gold. Yeah, I'm kind of glad I quit watching Toonami but before they switched to that because I would have been pissed. Did you hear that at the end? What did he say? Listen. Bang. Oh, nice. <laughs> Steve Bloom did that as like a tribute yeah. to like people <clears throat> who stuck with Toonami for so long. And meeting Steve Bloom is still like easily one of my like favorite yeah. moments he ever. He signed Bang on the front of my Cowboy Bebop case. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> Such a cool guy. Because uh, he was like, what do you want me to sign it? And I was like, there's so many good things like just surprise me. Like, And he just wrote Bang, Bang on it. And I was like, that works. Awesome. That's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> but anyway. It's like, I, was, I was either going to have him do that or what happens happens or um, see you Space Cowboy or something. 
Yeah, like See You Space Cowboy or uh, shit. There was one other one that I was thinking about too. I don't know. But but there's a lot of good lines that could have been. But Bang <laughs> is like definitely the one of the best. So. Bang. So all right, I think uh, that's gonna do it, everyone. This was My Hero Academia. Final episode is episode twenty five of season five, the high deep blue sky. I can't wait for the next season, and we hope that we will see you all in the next season. But for those of you who will be continuing to tune in with us on Mondays, stay tuned for we will be or we will be reengaging Attack on Titan for its final run. God, that. That's, again, dude, it's fucking crazy we're at this point. Mm -hmm. God. Anyway, thank you all so much I'm for tuning old, in. I'm old, And, uh... Everything's coming to an end. <laughs> and I guess we will see you all very Not soon. On our channel, though, at least. No, dude. <laughs> dude, don't jinx it. So, we will see you all in the I'll, next I'll one. I'll knock on wood as soon as we finish this. Huh? I'll knock on wood as soon as we finish this video. <sighs> Well, anyway, everyone, thank you all so much for tuning in with us. And we'll see you all in the next season, or we will see you next week with Attack on Titan. We'll see you, everybody. Peace.